Welcome back to Indian Trace. I know it. We have a combination here. And a shout out to Hopewell MJ, who takes authentic artifacts, if you want them to, if you want them to, and he restores them to a natural look and to a natural state. Just got these in the mail yesterday. We're going to take a look at these last, but these points are great. I'm going to explain where I got the points from, but uh, just giving you a look at some of the work. Of course, we're doing them in the honor of uh, an atlatl as these points were undoubtedly at Laddle Darts. But before I get going on that, I have a bunch of stuff here. If I can just get this arranged, give me a second here. I have three points here that are great points that have been seen that Mike went ahead and took and hafted them in for me. And I want to talk about those very briefly and then let you see some of the new product. The craftsmanship that he offers. And he's open for solicitation. And as you can see, if we go all the way down, I don't want to just give you a little bit of a preview. Some great attention to detail to where those points originally that we just looked at end up. Now these, I was able to send him the turkey feathers for these, and he did these some months ago, maybe years ago now. But uh, and then I like to think that I have the best collection from Hopewell MJ that anybody has. You've seen a lot of these, and I'm just going to mention those very briefly. I mean, a buffalo bone finishing knife. It's crazy. Crazy nice. Now, check this out. Just a little time here on Indian Trace. I hope everybody's doing great out there. And Mike, thanks for these aerials that I'm going to feature today. Hopefully stir up more interest in the thought of it. Here, here's the thought. You know, uh, I find so many authentic North American Indian artifacts. Why not take a couple that are just in my heart to bring them back to life a bit? Transitional. Uh type of look here with this point. I got this point at the jump off. Absolutely nice work to haft it in. To just be able to have a display that has a real authentic feel to it. The point underneath is one of my favorites from the archaic. Nice Guilford. That's what a Guilford looks like. It was a Guilford straight base that Mike hafted in for me. And uh, you can see where. And he didn't mess around with the stone much at all. At all. He tried to get a heartbeat of where this person who had made the point wanted it. Now it could have been hafted originally further up. But they relieved it. And he went ahead and hafted it onto there. And uh, just an absolutely beautiful point in the lighter brown patinaed rhyolite. And then I found a Guilford that was a quartz Guilford at Opening Sands. And he got that one into a point. Now I found it with that little chip off the outside edge, but these are great. They just look like authentic. Well, they are authentic points, but uh, just gives you an idea of what they could have looked like. Down to his work there. Just really fun stuff. Now... Take a look at this real fast here today, if you're interested in anything. Now, the difference here is that this pipe was made as a Micmac pipe uh, by a friend of mine in Georgia, a friend of mine's brother, actually, and uh, I wanted a Plains Indian peace pipe. This is absolutely a working product. I'm going to have to pack it with tobacco someday, even though I don't smoke it, and christen the pipe. Definitely. He bored it through. It is a working piece pipe. Definitely great piece. Now, Mike of Hopewell MJ did not make the bowl. Got the bowl from a, actually a, I think he's a state champion, uh, rock carver. You can get in touch with him. I'm sure he would make you one. Uh, 
but you'd have to get in touch with Georgia Rob and Terry, and that's how that goes. Then, of course, I found this, what I like to believe is a war club, did not have the working at all of a hammerstone. We've featured that before. That's ready to go, ready to use, hard as can be. Just great pieces for display. Love it. Mike did a great job. And then there's the finishing knife, I like to call it. Uh, elk. Elk. Uh, antler. And then buffalo bone. That's been featured before. But that blade is just absolutely awesome. Sharp. Thin. And I call it a finishing blade because... Uh, I think many of the animals that they killed were wounded, whether they had a buffalo jump or anything like that. Look at that blade. And then, it's a good look at these. I have my back a hold up. Then after that, whether it was a buffalo jump or you wounded a buffalo or a deer, many, many times with these at, with the atlatl. And look at these arrows here. Look how long those are. Many times, uh, you'd wound the animal and you'd have to go and you'd finish it off. And if you've ever seen the movie Avatar, uh, that was an honor that the animal was wounded to go and finish the animal off quick. And I like to call this a finishing knife because uh, I'd love to have it on my side and be able to finish the deer off real quick. And uh, that was before, of course, metals. So, you know, and it could have been a flint point which would have cut real well, but... Deer hide and other hides are very difficult to cut, uh, you know, wide open without a real tensile knife. So uh, my spirit behind this finishing point, this finishing knife, would be just to move this right into the vitals, to the heart, or an area that would kill the animal very quickly as you were upon it. It's a great look at those, isn't it? Anyway, Hopewell MJ is making these things, bringing things back to life. He's doing lots of things. He does a lot of axes and clubs of different sorts, but I absolutely love the arrows most. Now, take a look at this. These are the new ones that just came in yesterday. Look at this work. Of course, the ends are made appropriately for atlatls. A lot of people see the points we find, and it doesn't even matter what points they are. Uh, this is not focusing. There we go. Could be these. They think, okay, arrowheads, well, no, those, those were never shot with a bow and arrow. They were on an arrow type of point like this, but they were shot with atlatls, just like the end of these, suited for atlatls. The end of this, suited for an atlatl. And here's the new neat part. He put this in for the spirit of it. As many times uh, archeologists believe that the end shaft was made that after it might be thrust in, it could be it could easily pop out, and that uh, wouldn't cause a lot of damage, and they could possibly reuse what they used uh, to make the arrow out of. Because I know it took a lot of care to make these, as well as it did for them, shafts and what have you. And that's what that's about. And a lot of you out there that are used to archaeology understand what you're seeing there. This focus will work for me. And then, to finish, a really great look at the tips. This tip right here, I found at the strip in Site 5E at a rhyolite. Absolutely great point. He just hacked it in with the sinew and put that up there and just gave it a really good back-to-life party. And then this one I found at F Properties it was a great quartz tip. I said, you know what, I want to bring that back to life. So both of those was able to do that. I'm going to tell you what, they would have done the business that they needed to. Don't know how well this video is going to come in. All I can do is my best. My shout out and thanks to Hopewell MJ. 
and they're so long I don't know if I can get them all in there. I know I can get the ends and the tips. And then you're looking at the whole thing all the way up there. But it's a good look because these are atlatl darts. All of them. So for Mindy and Trace, for everybody out there, if you're not too bored yet, it's a good look at the work of Hopewell MJ. Again, comes through strong. Appreciate it, Mike.